Happy Friday, sixth grade. It's time for us to read a chapter of One Crazy Summer. I hope you guys have been keeping up with your comprehension questions. Please make sure that you send me over a message before end of the day on Friday so that I know how you're doing and so that I know how much work you're getting completed. It is for a grade, so please make sure you contact me, all right? Starting off today, One Crazy Summer, we're going to read the chapter called Glorious Hill. At this point in our book, Delphine and her sisters are being cared for by the people at the center, Sister Mukambu, um, Miss Woods, and Hirohodo. They're all helping to take care of her. And most recently, we realized that Delphine is really starting to show some similarities to her mom. She went with her sisters to put flyers for the people's rally in people's windows and at their doors at the stores. And she decided that when the store said no to her, that she wasn't going to go and give them her money anymore, that she was only going to support people who supported her. I think that's very bold and very cool. So, go Delphine. Glorious Hill, 185. I didn't know which was weirder, having Hirohodo see me in my pajamas or not having any chores to do. I tried to wash dishes and I always offered to mop the floor. But for the fifth day in a row, Mrs. Wood said, go outside, play. I felt like a watcher while Hirohodo chased Vanetta and Fern around. I sat on the porch with my book in my lap, glad that I had brought it along. In between turning pages, I would peek at Vanetta, Fern, and Hirohodo playing Mother May I or Freeze Tag. He knew just how to escape their tags and to keep the game going. I could see why Hirohodo put up with Vanetta and Janice at the center, why he let Fern chase him and tag him it when she wasn't fast enough to catch him. Hirohodo had no brothers or sisters. He liked being a brother to my sisters and me. Grateful that Hirohodo would soon tire his sisters out, I settled into my book on the porch. I could finish the chapter before it was time to come inside. I read my book, bright-eyed, breathing heavily, and I rooted for Rontu to win against the pack of wild dogs, his former brothers. Get him, Rontu, get him! I didn't hear the quiet that the sounds of the playing in the yard had stopped. I looked up and they were all staring around me with Hirohodo's go-kart. Hey Delphine! Vanetta and Fern giggled. Obviously they were a part of Hirohodo's plan to sneak up on me. He smiled, pleased to have caught me unaware. Want to try out my go-kart? I rolled my eyes and tried to appear older. Above playing kid games. Me on that thing. Vanetta and Fern started screaming that they wanted a ride. He tapped my sneaker with one of his doggedy high tops. It's fun. You'll like it. Before this week, I would have said, how do you know what I like? My goal to come off bored and older slipped out right from under me. Inside, I felt like I was being pulled onto the sixth grade dance floor. I wanted to give him my hand and let him pull me up, but I felt too big, tree-limbed, plain-faced. I'd probably look silly on that go-kart, just like I would look silly matching steps with some boy in the multi-purpose room at school. I glanced down at that sawed-off piece of wood resting on top of the metal frame with skate wheels up front, tricycle wheels in the back, a rope on one end, and a carpet square on the other. I had never seen Hirohodo sit on the carpet square. He always rode belly down, arms spread out and hands gripping the T-bar. It was a wonder that he wasn't all scarred up. Boy, you must be crazy. Stop being chicken. You can steer it. Those legs will reach the turn bar easy. Just hold onto the rope and keep steady. Benetta and Delphine snickered at Hirohodo's carefree choice of words. I couldn't hit him for calling me a long-legged chicken after I had gobbled down his mother's fish and rice. I said, I'm not getting on your street roller. No way. Instead of saying, not getting on your street roller coaster, or, yeah, no way, Jose, my sister's voices failed to come to my rescue. Instead, Vanetta and Fern, mostly Vanetta, screamed and danced around us, pleading to take my turn on the go-kart. Hirohodo shook his head, sorely disappointed, like he was Papa. I didn't think you were scared, Delphine. I'm not scared of that thing. My voice hit notes it was not known for reaching. Look, 
I messed up my pages. Then come on. No, chicken. I am not. He offered the rope to me and patted the carpet seat. Just a block, not even a hill. I couldn't let him think that I was weak and scared. Girl pride in a lower voice said, I'm not afraid of no hill. Before I knew it, we had become a merry parade. Me sitting on the go-kart, my feet on the bars. Hirohoto behind me pushing, and Veneta and Fern at the rear, parading up Magnolia Street. What a sight. I sat hunched over, holding onto the rope, my big sneakers on the turn bar. All I could do was wrap the rope tighter around my hands and pray. How could I find my balance, let alone trust it? Surely balance was needed to ride on that rolling cart of danger. Where was my good common sense? The common sense that Big Ma always pointed out I was born with. I was mad at myself for letting this happen, letting them push me into riding down some hill on this wooden, bumpy, hot rod roller. I could fall over on my butt, scrape every inch of skin on my arms and legs and hands. I could look stupid, scraped up, tangled mess, and on top of it all, screaming like a frady cat in front of my sisters. I hugged the rope. My heart pounded through my ears, down in my toes. None of that concerned anyone on the parade route. Hirohoto pushed happily. My sisters skipped, clapped, and sang. They might as well have been singing, Crash, Delphine, crash. Then Hirohoto stopped pushing. Now the very tips of my fingers pounded. We were at the top, the very, very top of the hill. Hirohoto looked at me like this was all fine, not like he was getting me back for being mean to him. My knees would knock if they weren't frozen. I wanted to get up and to walk away. Don't worry, it's safe, he said. My dad built it. It's sturdy and has no splinters. He sanded it down for days. Good job, right? Right, I said to him. I helped him. He turned the part of the tee so it swiveled. Real axle for the turns. It's good for racing, but don't worry, he said again. You just have to go straight. Keep it steady. He nodded and smiled. My dad's great. I doubted that he meant to get all girly talking about his father. He caught himself and changed his voice. Let's just make a note that what Delphine's saying about Hirohoto being girly because he's talking about his feelings is not real. That's just her being an immature teenage girl. Boys can talk about their feelings all they want. Ready, Delphine? I didn't answer. He said, use your sneakers to slow down and then stop. Just drag. Then he lifted my foot and put it in the right position. The position that would turn the heels of my sneakers as doggedly as his. Remember, you don't have to steer. It's a straight ride down. Just slide your sneakers like this. He moved my foot slightly sideways. It was a wonder he had soles at all. He told me to hold on tight. Then he ordered Vanetta and Fern to come on as if, he hadn't, as if he had already taken my place as the oldest. Part of me didn't like it one bit. The other part of me didn't have time to think about that. Push! Vanetta and Fern screamed, yay! And I looked up, mad, scared, and thrilled. I felt six hands on my back and the bumpy ground beneath me. With all that rumbling, my head spun with the sheer craziness of it all. Being pushed down the street, my sisters and Hirohoto cheering and pushing and letting go, and time not ticking but racing away. It was too late. Too late to jump off while the go-kart rolled, its steel skate wheels hitting every bump and pebble on the sidewalk. I leaned left and right, trying to find my balance, then forward, left, right, and forward, my drawn-up knees helping me to stay steady. There was a curve in the sidewalk. Not exactly straight like Hirohodo had told me. To me, it was winding and dangerous like the Chinatown Dragon. As the go-kart went faster, I felt the rumbling of the wheels hitting the concrete beneath me. I screamed so loud that I startled myself. I had never heard myself scream. I screamed from the top of my lungs, from the pit of my heart. I screamed like I was snaking and falling. 
I screamed and hiccuped and laughed like my sisters, like I was having the time of my life flying down that glorious hill. Anetta, Fern, and Hirohodo had run after me, but Hirohodo had outrun my sisters, and he met me at the other end. When we were all together, together, Hirohodo led the parade of him, Vanetta, and me. Him, Vanetta, and Fern hooting and dancing around me. That's where we'll pause for today. Go ahead over and complete the comprehension questions. I have not been seeing a lot of these getting answered on the Google Classroom, so I'm very, very hopeful you guys are doing them in your binders. Otherwise, you're going to miss a lot of learning, and it's going to be really, really challenging for you to get back on track with us as sixth graders. In addition, you have a 30-second vocab video to watch, me wishing you good luck and telling you where to take your vocab exam. Bye, y'all. I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great weekend.